Peter, let's talk a little bit about creatine supplementation. Uh, I've heard about it from everything from football players to you know uh, bodybuilders, uh, and I've even heard some endurance athletes take it on. Tell us about it and what's the truth. Well, um, I think it's first important to understand what creatine is and why our body uses it. If you recall from our discussion a couple of weeks ago, uh, we have three energy systems in our body, but one of them is this system called the creatine phosphate system. And remember, everything in life comes down to providing phosphate to cells for muscle contraction and ion transport. And the creatine phosphate, that was the first one we used, right? That's the That's when right. we have that first burst of energy. That is your quickest source of energy. Uh, that is the phosphate that you have immediately accessible to you. As I describe it from an evolutionary perspective, when the lion jumps out of the bush, you've got 20 seconds worth of creatine to scamper up a tree and get away from it. That's it. Okay. So, given that we know we have a limited amount of creatine, and that's what limits how much of that creatine phosphate we can have and how much phosphate we can buffer, um, gosh, it's probably been over 20 years ago now, people started asking the question, well, what if you ingested more creatine? Could you make more creatine available for more phosphate to therefore have more creatine phosphate? In other words, could you extend the explosive window to a greater period of time? And as you point out, there are a couple of side effects or benefits of this, depending on how you think about it. One is you potentially have more burst energy. But two, you mentioned bodybuilders. Well, bodybuilders find this to be an appealing substance because when you are ingesting this thing, you tend to retain more water within your muscles. So, you know, if, you're, if one of your, uh, you know, desired outcomes is to increase muscle mass, this is a way to do it. Now, the question I think that people are really interested in if they're watching this video is how, what role does creatine play in endurance events? Unless anybody here does the 100 meter dash, in which case I would argue creatine probably helps. But if you're starting to talk about a two mile swim or a 20 mile swim, I think the answer is I don't know partly because there's really no great data to suggest it. I personally have experimented with and without creatine for the last 20 years across many different sports, and I have found no doubt that it does um, provide me some benefit in terms of short burst activity. I have not personally found that it provides any benefit in long sustained activity. I have found that I also gain weight when I'm taking creatine, which is not surprising because of the side effect that I described, which is you tend to retain more water. And so when I'm wearing my cycling hat, I actually find creatine to be something I don't want in my system. Um, I notice I gain about four to five pounds when I'm fully loaded with creatine, and that's four or five pounds I'd rather not be carrying up a hill on my bicycle. The last point I'll make on creatine is it comes in many forms, and it's undergone an enormous evolution. In the olden days, and by the olden days I mean back when I was in high school, we used to take something called creatine monohydrate, and we would take it by the truckload. We've become a little bit more sophisticated now, and we tend to take creatine, when I say we, I mean people who take it today, we tend to take it in a much smaller form, and we tend to take it mixed with other agents that theoretically help it get into the muscle easier, stay there better. So today a popular product would be a crealkaline, where you would mix creatine with nitric oxide and other substances that allow you to take a lot less of it in an attempt to mitigate some of these other features. Well, just like any supplement, I think your advice is do your research, find out what's best for you, and I think another part of this too is remember to uh, don't just start taking a supplement right before a major event or a competition. Absolutely not. Experimentation is key to everything. <laughs>